While imposter syndrome is common across many fields, it's specially pronounced in software development, with studies showing that 70-80% to of developers experience it at some point in their careers, especially early on. Despite how often it's discussed, we rarely ask why it's so pervasive in the field. What is it about programming, or the people drawn to it, that makes the feeling of fraudulence so persistent, even among the experienced? This video is an attempt to go deeper, to explore the hidden psychological, technical, and cultural roots of imposter syndrome in software, and more importantly, how you might begin to loosen its grip on your own work and life. In many ways, the software developer finds themselves in the same predicament as a physicist. The deeper they go, the more they realize how little they truly know. But where the physicist confronts the endless mysteries of nature, the developer faces an ever-growing man-made maze of tools, libraries, paradigms, and languages. The stream of things you learn doesn't slow down, it accelerates. The result? From the outside, the developer may seem highly knowledgeable, but from the inside, they're painfully aware of how much they don't know. What others see as expertise, they feel as insufficiency. To claim mastery in such a context can not only feel arrogant, but fraudulent. The second reason for imposter syndrome is personal temperament. Software development, generally speaking, tends to attract individuals who are not known for their confidence or self-esteem. And sometimes this lack of confidence is not reserved to one area of life, but something more deep-rooted, and it ends up applying to everything one does or engages with. And one of those things could be software development. Now, pair that with the constant stream of headlines celebrating developers with ship rule changing applications in a weekend, and it becomes easier, or maybe even more rational, to question your own worth than to believe in your own abilities. A fragile and unpredictable environment. Failure is not rare in software, in fact, it's routine. And not just in small bugs, but failures with high stakes like outages, breaches, loss of revenue, broken experiences, and even safety risks in life critical systems. The scary part is that these failures often happen despite the best intentions and planning. One small oversight, one assumption, one line of code, and the system fails. For many developers, it feels like you're always one mistake away from a catastrophe. And when you live in that reality, it's hard to ever feel in control. Because in most domains, mastery comes with a sense of certainty and command. But in software, to say you're in full control of a system is nearly unheard of. So developers learn to live without the feeling of confidence that their other professionals share, and often mistake the lack of it as a sign that they don't belong. And in truth, what they're experiencing is not fraudulence, it's the weight of complexity, it's cognitive dissonance, the internal conflict between what we're expected to be, experts, problem solvers, architects of logic, and the reality we live in, chaos, entropy, and edge cases. Competing goals and the ideal of excellence. Software development is hard enough on its own. But the pressure gets worse when you ask to hit deadlines and write clean, elegant and maintainable code, sometimes all at the same time. Two full-time goals that often pull in opposite directions, and for many developers, only one of them wins. The deadline. So you ship something you're not proud of, you cut corners, you leave the dust behind, you promise yourself you'll refactor later, but later never comes, and the guilt settles in. Meanwhile, you hear stories of 10x developers who somehow manage to ship clean code and build features at breakneck speed. And even if you don't believe the hype, you start comparing. You wonder why you're not as good or as efficient. But this is a trap. Once an ideal is established, we chase it, consciously or not. And every time it falls short, that sense that you're not good enough grows worse. Learn more and notice the patterns. While the field keeps expanding, most new ideas in software are rarely groundbreaking. They're often not more than rebrands or remixes of older concepts. Over time, you begin to see the patterns, you notice the frameworks, the languages, the architectures, they often echo the same core principles. What looks unfamiliar on the surface starts to feel familiar underneath. It's like learning programming languages, where the first one is hard, but each new one gets easier. And this same idea or concept can be applied to the field of software development in general. Venture into the unknown. Imposter syndrome is rooted in our fear of the unknown, in our sense that we haven't mastered it. But the only way to shrink fear is to face it, to take on bigger and scarier projects, to build things that challenge you. If imposter syndrome comes from lack of experience, then the best antidote is experience. The more unknowns you face and survive, the more you train yourself to believe that you can handle whatever comes next. In the end, imposter syndrome isn't proof that you don't belong. It's often a sign that you care, that you're paying attention, that you have taste and standards and an honest view of your limits. The bad developer is not the one who feels inadequate but the one who doesn't care at all. Subscribe for more.